Hey guys, welcome to Solar React Talk. Today I'm going to be reacting to every country in Africa part two. Uh, if you want to check out my previous reaction, I'll put the link right up top here. Just click on the card and you'll be able to access it. Okay, let's start. Three, two, one, go. Welcome to every country in Africa part two. If you haven't watched part one, click on the card here to watch it fast. Our desire to inspire a passion for learning about Africa runs deep. If you'd like to have some better understanding of the continent, start now by subscribing and hit the little red bell on the side to get notified every time we post. Welcome to Reason Africa. The last country we covered in part one was Burkina Faso. Burkina Faso enjoys decent bilateral relations with neighbor Guinea, which is one of three countries in Africa to have Guinea in its name. In addition to the various places, there are also animals which use the word Guinea, the Guinea pig most famously, and the Guinea fowl. Guinea is a traditional name for the region of the African coast of West Africa. The official name of the country is the Republic of Guinea, but is sometimes referred to as Guinea Conakry. As colonizers partitioned the continent, Many European nations scrambled for a piece of their own Guinea. At independence, French Guinea became Guinea, Spanish Guinea became Equatorial Guinea, and Portuguese Guinea became Guinea-Bissau. Guinea-Conakry is the largest of the three Guineas, and it occupies a total area of 245,860 square kilometers. The Niger River, the Gambia River, and the Senegal River are among 22 West African rivers that have their origins in Guinea. These rivers provide water to seven countries in the region. With 85% of the population made of Muslims, the capital is home to the Conakry Grand Mosque, the fourth largest mosque in Africa and the largest in Sub-Saharan Africa. Guinea's mineral wealth makes it potentially one of Africa's richest countries. It has one of the world's biggest iron deposits containing billions of tons of high-grade ore. It mined 60 million tons of bauxite in 2018 and is aiming to leapfrog Australia and China to become the world's leading producer of aluminium ore. It has significant diamond and gold deposits and undetermined quantities of uranium. A large deposit of natural uranium was also recently discovered in Egypt. Egypt is one of the most visited countries in Africa. Located in the northeast corner of Africa, Egypt is a transcontinental country spanning the northeast corner of Africa and southwest corner of Asia via a land bridge formed by the Sinai Peninsula. It is the world's only contiguous Euphrasia nation. The Suez Canal, which earns Egypt an average of about 430 million US dollars per month, was constructed to allow transportation of goods between Europe and Asia without having to navigate around Africa. Egypt is home to one of the world's earliest civilizations. With a population estimated at more than 95 million, it is the most populous country in the Arab world and the third most populous nation in Africa. The official name of Egypt is Jumhuria Misr al Arabiya, meaning the Arab Republic of Egypt in English. Cairo has served as Egypt's capital for more than a thousand years, but the government is building a new capital some 45 kilometers to the east to help ease congestion in Cairo. With an estimated population of 22 million and approximately 500 square kilometers, Cairo is arguably the largest city in Africa and the Middle East. Ancient Egyptians invented the 365 days a year calendar to predict the yearly floods of the Nile River. Located in Giza, the Pyramid of Khufu is the largest pyramid in Egypt, measuring 146.7 meters in height. It is one of the oldest historic sites that remain largely intact. Passion for football runs deep in Egypt. Football fans always park stadiums and entertainment joints to watch and cheer and miss a ball Cairo derbies between arch rivals Al Ahly and Zamalek. The North Africans also take part in table tennis, squash, fencing and swimming. The Egyptian pound is the main currency and they have the largest and strongest military on the continent. 99% of Egypt's population lives on just 5.5% of the land, mostly along the Nile, which is the longest river in the world. The White Nile rises in Lake Victoria in Uganda. Uganda's flag consists of six horizontal bands of black, yellow, and red. The official languages of its people are English and Swahili. However, the majority of the population speak Luganda. Almost half of the country's population is under the age of 14, which makes it one of the youngest countries in the world. Rolex, not the luxury watch, a Ugandan snack can be found anywhere in the country's streets. Chapatis, eggs, and vegetables, these are the ingredients needed to prepare the Rolex. It is the fast food of choice in Uganda, even named 
among the top African fast foods by CNN. Anyone visiting Uganda needs to taste it. The other delicacy is pan-fried grasshoppers. Those who eat them will tell you that grasshoppers, commonly known as nsenene in Uganda, is the crunchiest, most delicious and addictive treats they have ever eaten. Mount Elgon is a volcano in Uganda with a base so large that it measures 50 kilometers by 80 kilometers, the largest base in the world. Uganda is home to half the population of mountain gorillas in the world, 11% of the world's bird population and 6.8% of the world's butterfly species, making it a tourist hotspot for holiday makers. The nation is Africa's second largest coffee producer after Ethiopia, the eighth largest in the world and the fourth largest producer of Robusta coffee, which accounts for at least 70% of the country's beans. A fast-growing tournament every year gathers hundreds of thrill-seekers from Africa at the source of the River Nile to ride the rapids and showcase their skills at one of the top whitewater rafting spots in the world. Though the East African nation, home to Africa's most promising soccer teams, is usually not associated with kayaking, the government is looking to exponentially develop the sport to international standards. Uganda shares its southern border with Rwanda. There is so much to Rwanda than the two things most people know about it. First, that it has gorillas, and the second, the devastating 1994 genocide. Known as the land of a thousand hills, the country is 1,000 meters above sea level on average. Its capital city, Kigali, is the cleanest in Africa, as the government implemented a ban for the use of plastic bags for environmental protection. Thousands of Kigali residents every month participate in an event called Car Free Day, a culture that requires residents to leave their cars at home and mobile phones and walk and jog and ride bikes to the city to encourage mass sports and fitness. Since the early 2000s, Rwanda has witnessed an economic boom, improving the living standards of many Rwandans. The country's development indicators are impressive to say the least. Life expectancy is 67.5 years. For every 1,000 residents, only 2.5 deaths per year. The 2017 Corruption Perception Index ranked Rwanda as the third least corrupt country in Africa. According to the 2019 World Bank Bank doing business index, Rwanda is the 29th easiest place to do business in the world, the only low-income country in the top 30. It has been ranked among the top 10 countries in sub-Saharan Africa that are on progress towards attaining the UN-backed Sustainable Development Goals by 2030. In order to enhance medical care across the country, in 2016, Rwanda started a drone delivery service which helps in the transportation of medical supplies in far-flung areas of the East African nation. Each year, newborn gorilla babies are celebrated in an exciting event at the foothills of the Virunga Mountains in efforts to conserve endangered mountain gorillas, making for the country's most important event in its conservation calendar. Cycling is one of the fastest growing sports in Rwanda. The Tour de Rwanda has been drawing fans worldwide, producing elite cyclists and inspiring many across the East African nation to take up the sport. Rwanda is one of the two African nations bidding to host the UCI Road World Championship in 2025. The other nation is Morocco. The Kingdom of Morocco is a North African country in the far west of the Maghreb region, bordering the Atlantic Ocean to the west and the Mediterranean Sea to the north. Its Berber, Arabian and European cultural influences make it stand out from its Maghreb neighbors. Its population is about 36 million who mainly live on the coastal cities. These include Rabat, which is the country's capital city, and Casablanca, its largest city, and Marrakech. Morocco can be divided into three regions. Desert, the Sahara in the southeastern part, mountainous, made up of the Atlas and Reef Mountains, and the coastal, Atlantic and Mediterranean regions. Its currency is the Moroccan dirham, and it has a vibrant economy which is the fifth largest in Africa. Morocco hosts Africa's highest ski resort in the Atlas Mountains at between 8,500 and 10,500 feet above sea level. It is common knowledge that the largest film set in the world is Hollywood. It's interesting to note that the second largest is in Morocco. Films that have been shot here include Prince of Persia, Sahara, and The Mummy. With two million mirrors in a 6,000-acre facility, Morocco's Nur Concentrated Solar Power Plant, the largest solar complex in the world, is a stunning testament of Morocco's renewable energy ambitions. The 580-megawatt solar plant is the largest sign of the country's ambitions. The 580-megawatt solar plant is the latest sign of the country's ambitions for a 52% renewable energy pool by 2030. 
the country boasts of 11 wind farms in operation with a total installed capacity of 1,200 megawatts and nearly 1,100 megawatts under construction. Their inauguration will bring Morocco's wind power to 2,300 megawatts. Rabat is serious with its bid to become a green superpower. The rare two-year wood only found in Morocco is used to create the dashboards of several luxury car brands, including Mercedes-Benz, BMW, and the highly luxurious Rolls-Royce. Two-year trees are in high demand and are one of the most exclusive woods in the world. The nation is also one of the world's largest producers and exporters of sardines. Another major export is tangerines. Tangerines are named after the coastal city of Tangier. Argan oil from the argan tree, which is native to Morocco, is a relative newcomer to the kitchen of top chefs and cosmetic companies. It's celebrated as the latest superfood. The argan tree grows almost exclusively in the barren lands of southwestern Morocco. Morocco was the first nation to recover Organized the USA as a country. They signed a treaty with the United States in 1786. Food is a very important part of Moroccan culture. Their national dish is couscous, something of a symbol of Morocco. Couscous is a traditional dish that is not bound by class or ethnicity, uniting the country around delicious servings. Speaking of food, couscous is also a mouth-watering favorite in Senegal. Senegal is located on the West African continent. Its northern border is formed by the Senegal River, and the capital, Dakar, lies on the Cap Vert Peninsula, the westernmost point of the continent of Africa. As the only nation in the region to have avoided military coups, Senegal has always played a prominent role in African politics. As a black nation that is more than 90% Muslim, the nation has been a diplomatic and cultural mortar between Islamic and black African worlds. At the far end of Petit Court, a stretch of coast in Senegal, lies a village popularly known as Shell Island, an island built entirely of millions of seashells. Everything including the streets, houses, and the island cemetery constitute of the seashells. A narrow bridge connects the mainland to this incredible man-made destination, created over a period of three centuries as people harvested mollusks and discarded the shells off the mainland. The ultimate off-road challenge, the famous Dakar Rally, also known as the world's toughest motor race, gave Dakar an envied status in the motor world. A grueling off-road endurance contest, where finishing is an achievement in itself, was conceived in 1978, where bikes, cars, trucks, quads, and ultra-terrain vehicles raced from Paris to Dakar via Algeria and Niger. But due to security threats in Mauritania, races since 2009 have been held in South America. Despite the changing routes of the rally, one city remained virtually a reference point, the great city of Dakar. Over the years, Senegal has managed to wriggle its way up the food chain to become one of the world's largest producers of peanuts. The West African legume producer's tenacity in scaling up production has been consistent, earning millions of dollars to its GDP. Senegal is home to one of the most vivid reminders of the infamous transatlantic slave trade. Gori Island, three kilometers off the coast of Dakar, and its door of no return is a constant reminder of the final exit point of more than 10 million slaves. Senegal is one of the top salt producers in West Africa, mining more than 450,000 tons every year. As part of a pan-African effort to combat desertification that is robbing the Sahel region of arable land, Senegal is steadfast in championing planting of trees in a bid to push back the encroaching Sahara Desert. The plan is to plant a 15-kilometer wide, 7,755 kilometers long tree wall that would stretch from Senegal in West Africa all the way to the east in Djibouti. Djibouti is one of the four countries in the Horn of Africa. The capital, Djibouti City, accounts for over 70% of the country's total population of 977,000. The total land area of Djibouti is 23,200 square kilometers. Djibouti was part of the French colony of Somaliland in 1967. It was renamed the French territory of the Afars and the Isas before becoming the fully independent Republic of Djibouti in 1977. The port of Djibouti is strategically located in one of the busiest shipping routes in the world, linking Europe, the Far East, the Horn of Africa, and the Persian Gulf. 70% of the cargo at the port is shipped to or from Ethiopia, accounting for over 95% of Ethiopia's foreign trade. 
Djibouti also hosts more foreign military bases than any other country, with French, Italian, Chinese, Japanese forces, and the only permanent U.S. base in Africa, maintaining permanent presence there to expand their tactical presence. The country currently hosts five major military bases, in addition to a few others scheduled to be built in the near future. The country generates more than 300 million U.S. dollars in annual income from military bases. Djibouti is rich with coral and fish species. Whale sharks, the largest known fish in the world, regularly visit the coast of Djibouti, making the country a favorite tourist hotspot. Lake Asal of Djibouti is one of the saltiest lakes in the world, only second to Don Juan Pond in Antarctica. In contrast, it is certainly more saltier than the Dead Sea. The lake is not only the lowest point in Djibouti, or the lowest point on the continent of Africa, but also the third lowest point on Earth after the Sea of Galilee and the Dead Sea. Its water reaches temperatures of about 57 degrees Celsius in summer. A recent 10% slash on electricity tariffs by Djibouti's government looks to increase growth in the industrial sector in the Horn of Africa nation, which has been hooked up to Ethiopia's electricity grid since 2011. Previously, at 0.28 US dollars per kilowatt hour, compared to an African average of 0.14, the lowest price is now set at 0.16 US dollars per kilowatt. Djibouti is the eighth smallest country in Africa. Seventh on that list is Eswatini. Eswatini has two capital cities, Mbabane the administrative capital, while Lobamba is the royal and legislative capital and is almost completely surrounded by South Africa. Until April 2018, Eswatini went by the name Swaziland. However, King Mswati III decided to reinstall the country's Swati name, Eswatini, and announced to cheering crowds that the country would be renamed the Kingdom of Eswatini. However, an interesting fact to note is that the kingdom was always considered Eswatini by its people. The change was only a legal affirmation. Official languages are English and Siswati, a language loosely related to Isitosa. While Eswatini has its own currency called Lilangeni, it's pegged on the South African rand and the currencies are considered interchangeable and most businesses will accept either as payment. It is currently the only country in Africa not practicing multi-party democracy and is one of the world's last remaining absolute monarchies. Iswatini rule consists of a king and a queen mother. The king is known as Nguyenyama or Lion. The queen mother, in addition to being the king's mother, is considered to being the mother of the country. She earns the title of Ndlovukazi or the She-Elephant. King Sobuza II, the present king's father, reigned from 1899 to 1982 and spent 82 years on the throne, making him the longest reigning monarch in world history. Iswatini is one of the best places in Africa to see free-roaming black and white rhino in the wild. In both its beautiful Mhaya Game Reserve and Halane Royal National Park, which is also home to the largest population of nesting vultures in Africa. The protected areas of Eswatini have some of the most stringent conservation security measures for endangered species and is home to one of the best anti-poaching units in Africa. It is said that game rangers are allowed to shoot to kill anyone suspected of poaching. The Mahonjwa Mountains, located both in South Africa and Eswatini, are formations of rocks dating as far back as 3.6 billion years. They are thought to be one of the oldest mountain ranges in the world. Once a year, Eswatini holds a fertility festival and reed dance called Omhlanga, where over 25,000 unmarried girls of the kingdom dress in elaborate costumes and sing and dance, giving the king an opportunity to choose a new wife. Highly praised internationally as one of the seventh African music festival you really have to see and advertised as the top African festival, the Bushfire Festival is globally recognized as it draws tourists from across Africa and around the world. The nation's international dialing code is plus 268. When trying to make international calls, it can be a minefield to work out which international calling codes and numbers go where. Each country has its own unique code. Tell us in the description below the international calling code for the country you are currently living in. Our desire to inspire a passion for learning about Africa runs deep. If you'd like to have some better understanding of the continent, start now by subscribing and hit the little red bell on the side to get notified every time we post. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Oh. There's so much information I still need to process. I think I might need to watch it again. Um, 
just to you know solidify all that knowledge <laughs> because it's escaping my mind right now um Senegal is very interesting especially with that shell city or shell village almost everything is made out of shells that that's a place that I'd, I have to visit you know that has to be on my bucket list of a place to visit in fact I'm going to look for a, a, a video on YouTube that um, showcases that village or that city uh, filled with shells and everything's made out of shells I need to watch that and hopefully I can find one um, yeah Rwanda Egypt Djibouti uh, the three guineas, that's so interesting. Guinea-Bissau, um, Equatorial Guinea, and what? Yeah, Guinea, right? Yeah, I think it's just called Guinea. Oh no, I think I forgot. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm, I'm going to watch it again just to double check. And uh, Eswatini, very close neighbors, they're like right next door to us because uh, I'm living in South Africa, so yeah, I know. Um, what other country? Morocco with uh, its capital city, Rabat. I thought its capital city was Casablanca, you know. I I didn't think about Rabat. I always thought that its capital city was Casablanca and one of its major cities, Marrakesh. But I never really thought of Rabat as its capital. I didn't know about that, in fact, I should say, should say that. And yeah, Uganda with its gorilla population. They're so cute though, but they're dangerous. <laughs> Those animals, they're cute, but they are dangerous. Like, you must have respect for them. They are not some sort of toys that you can play with or like your pet animal in your house. No, like, show them the respect that they deserve, you know. Um, yes, they are cute, but rest assured, they can kill you. <laughs> they can kill you. Um, yeah. What else? W which other country am I missing? Mm, there's so many. Wait, did he, did he speak about Niger? I'm not sure. But what I like about um, this part two is also... Um, the showcasing of the national and even continental projects like the solar panels in Morocco, like the power infrastructure that they're building in Djibouti and also the tree line that um, crosses from east to west Africa. Um, also the uh, Cairo making a, a new capital city to relieve conge congestion from the um, from the main city that's also a very good uh, infrastructure build that is required so yeah i really do enjoy all of this information that they're giving us not just you know the biodiversity and the people but also the developments that are occurring in these uh, countries on Af on the african continent so yeah guys if you like the video give me a like you can also subscribe to my channel. You can also click on the notification bell if you wish to be up to date with my latest videos. Okay, guys, that's it. Bye-bye.